Very good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Ashing Sunny Veer Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines first. Release will be provided immediately to the depositors of ETI and the finance. President assures. National People's Power dismisses allegations of 10 million US dollars by MCC. News in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksa instructs the central bank officials to examine and immediately provide reliefs to depositors of the collapsed The Finance and ETI financial institutions. President also directed to set up a new committee represented by Presidential Secretariat, Central Bank, the Treasury and the depositors to monitor the procedure of settling the deposits. परीक्षा क्रम वेद අපි ඉක්මනින්ම හදන්න මොකද මේ ෆයිනැන්ස් කම්පනිස් කියන ඒවා තවත් තියෙනවා මේ වන්ට නිසියාකාරව වග කියන පුද්ගලයෝ මේවා නියාමනය කරන පුද්ගලයෝ මේවා මාසිකව හරි බලන මිනිස්සු ගැන ක්‍රමවේදයක් මේකට තියෙන්න ඕන ඉතින් මේක මේ විදිහට තවත් ෆයිනැන්ස් කම්පනිස් කීපයක් මේ වගේ ජනතාව අපහසුව තත්ත්වයට පත් නොවෙන විදිහට මම හිතන්නේ මහ බැංකුව නියම නියාමනය ක්‍රමයක් මේවා පරීක්ෂා කරන ක්‍රමයක් ඉක්මනින්ම යොදන්න ඕන The Central Bank of Sri Lanka yesterday announced a fresh credit guarantee and interest subsidy scheme to further accelerate lending by the banking sector to COVID-19 hit businesses in the country. The monetary board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka at its meeting held last Friday decided to implement a credit guarantee and interest subsidy scheme to accelerate lending by banks to businesses that are adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. This scheme, which will be launched by this Wednesday, the 1st of July 2020, will operate in parallel with the Saubagya COVID-19 Renaissance Facility and the new facility approved by the Monterey Board under Section 83 of the Monterey Law Act within the already announced threshold of 150 billion rupees. Under this scheme, the central bank will provide a credit guarantee to banks ranging from 80% for smaller loans to 50% for relatively large loans, enabling banks to grant loans to address working capital requirements of the affected businesses. With the central bank absorbing a significantly higher percentage of the credit risk, banks can extend their lending to vulnerable businesses, focusing on the viability and cash flows of such businesses rather than collateral. Moreover, the CBSL statement states that banks are expected to use their own funds, particularly the additional liquidity of close to 180 billion rupees provided by the central bank through the cumulative reduction in the statutory reserve ratio of 300 basis points thus far during the pandemic period to grant loans at 4% to businesses. The central bank will provide an interest subsidy of 5% to cover the cost of funds of banks. In the meantime, one of the state-owned banks in Sri Lanka, Bank of Ceylon, announces that it will sign a 140 million US dollar financing facility at an attractive rate from the China Development Bank, which is the world's largest development financial entity. Accordingly, Bank of Ceylon will draw down the funding via two tranches of 70 million US dollars each in August and December this year. Furthermore, the BOC is firming up a further 250 million US dollar in long-term funding from two other multilateral lenders at attractive rates. The fresh facility with China Development Bank, the largest Chinese bank for financing bilateral cooperation as well as long-term lending and bonding issuance is the second for the BOC and the first one was inked in 2009. Apart from new foreign funding, BOC domestically got an infusion of 30 billion rupees following the 2% reduction in the statutory reserve ratio by the central bank recently. Last week, BOC floated a 5 billion rupees bond issue as well. To date, it has disbursed over 16 billion rupees in support for the post COVID 19 era. Stay tuned for more news after this short.
Welcome back after the break. Former JVP parliamentarian Bimal Ratnayaka claims that the government is in a shady game of signing the MCC agreement just after the general elections. Speaking at a press briefing held in Colombo, former MP Ratnayaka said that the government indirectly tells the general public that Sri Lanka has already taken 10 million US dollars from the USA and therefore Sri Lanka will have to sign the MCC agreement. Moreover, he refused that no such transaction had been taken place or no any enforcing documents have been signed between the parties. <laughs> ඔය මූලික ප්‍රධාන MCC ගිවිසුමට අදාළ ගිවිසුම් නෙමෙයි. ඒ පූර්ව අස්සම් කරපු ගිවිසුම් වලින් MCC ගිවිසුම් අස්සම් කිරීමට කිසිදු බැඳියාවක් නැහැ. ඒ නිසා අපි ආණ්ඩුවට අභියෝග කරනවා ඒ වගන්ති පෙන්නන්න. මේ දෙක දැන් මේ දෙක අස්සම් කරපු නිසා MCC ගේ අස්සම් කරන්න වෙනවා. අන්න එහෙම එක පෙන්නන්න. ගුණුරන් කමිටු වාර්තාව ඩොලර් මිලියන් 10ක් සම්බන්ධව නිශ්චිත දෙයක් කියන්නේ නැහැ. නිකන් ඩොලර් මිලියන් 10ක් ගැන කියනවා උනේ මොකද්ද කියලා කියන්නේ. අපි කියන්නේ America and Lanka and the dollar million the Hat Dunan, America can in any Dunanakil. It is a dollar million the Hat, you know, Lanka, Kaja Bandaga, Ginumer. Transparency International Sri Lanka, which is part of March 12 movement, a collective of civil society organizations, states that the voters can have the best choice if the candidates of the forthcoming parliamentary election submit their assets and liability declarations to the public, enabling for a better political landscape in the country. We know that sometimes the financial implications of contesting elections and other things don't make sense at times. And having these declarations of assets and liabilities in the hands of the public is essential to enable voters to also have the best voter choice, but also it enables the candidates themselves to show their commitment to a different political culture, their commitment to want to do things differently. Through the March 12th movement and the work of our organizations, We've already seen 11 members of parliament of the previous parliament producing their asset declarations and putting it in public. But we want to encourage more and more candidates at the upcoming election to also do the same thing. Provide that information so that the public can see. Detailing on the threats and dangers faced by females during the coronavirus pandemic, Global Director for Gender Issues of the World Bank, Karen Ground highlights that women in the informal sector jobs are mostly vulnerable during a crisis like COVID-19 situation. School closures and economic necessity can lead boys and girls to drop out. And depending on what they do, the experience from previous crises is that boys go back quicker and some girls just don't return either because they're in the labor market or because they have caregiving uh, responsibilities. In many countries, there's a digital divide where boys have greater access to the internet. They might actually monopolize the one computer that's in a poor household's home. And if that's the case, it means that may, boys may be prioritized over girls in terms of having greater access to learning materials. So it means that girls may actually fall behind in terms of learning opportunities and learning outcomes. The other thing about the labor force that I think is really important is that around the world, women predominate in informal employment. These are the types of jobs that don't come with fringe benefits like social protection and health insurance and unemployment compensation. And a solution, which I know we'll come to, is to really think about how we extend social protection programs, particularly cash transfers, to those groups of workers. Speaking further, Global Director for Gender Issues of the World Bank, Karen Ground, notes that governments should ensure the protection of the frontline health workers who are mostly women. She further stressed that better social protection systems and financing systems should be enforced to ensure the well-being of the lesser privileged of the society. We need to pay attention to females as the frontline caregivers. We need to reduce their risk of exposure by ensuring that they have the right equipment and the right resources. We need to ensure that women can access health services and we need to ensure that certain services just 
are essential and keep going. The second response is really uh, protecting the poor and protecting those who are most vulnerable. It's not just the cash transfers, it's also figuring out how we can help people preserve their jobs uh, and their livelihoods and can, in a sense, rebuild back better. So how do we build back better? It's not, it's strengthening the systems, the social protection systems. It's strengthening the financial system and, and the checks and balances and uh, ensuring uh, liquidity, uh, better bankruptcy, regulations, for instance. It's building back better in the sense of having a stronger framework for care, the caregiving that I mentioned, whether it's at the community level or whether it's what employers provide or whether it's what the government subsidizes. These are just essential. We'll be back with stock updates after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 9.58 points to close at 5,153.77, and the S&P SL20 dropped 13.53 points to close at 2,277.32. The turnover was 1.1 billion rupees, and over 34 million shares were traded. Up next are forex rates. And that's all the news for today. See you tomorrow with State of Business at the same time. Until then, take care. Goodbye.